Welcome to this edition of What a Horse. We got a lot we're going to go over today, so I'll let you do it first and then we'll take off. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro. 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount Count with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion Stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another World Grand Champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, you know, Jerry, you and I were talking about uh, we want to ask everybody to pray for Mickey yes. and Rodney. They are uh, facing some pretty tough times. I, I, I haven't been able to find out a whole lot about Rodney, but uh, I did text back and forth with Drew, and uh, Mickey's doing pretty good. They're going to move him into a regular room out of ICU. But uh, uh, I haven't heard back from Susan said that Rodney was was improving, but still they they need your prayers. That's a, yes, they do. Them are two elite trainers in this industry that we need to keep. Yes. Uh, right now, a lot's going on. The trainers had a conference call last week where they went over a lot of this new proposed rule, but I want to point out a few things. Uh, Representative John Rose is is fighting for our horse. He they there was an article in the report about it and but the media when talking about it, I'm I'm gonna show a picture. This is a picture that the media put up almost the whole time that they were talking. Now that's one of Clance C's old props that he put together. But the media uses that and and I called and or called his office, got an email, sent him an email and told him that you know I appreciate him standing up, but the media when when they report this, it'd be nice if they would show what is in reality and not what Clancy put out there wanting them to believe. Everybody found out that he abused that glamour horse. And, but we got accused for it. 
this is the way the, all of these horses were given scarrow violations, every one of them. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about what the USDA says is proper and, and, and not proper. Kind of like your horse, they said that uh, Phil Scar yes. <clears throat> was intentional violation. And what did they say you did? I blistered that horse. To that make you that, blistered, blistered yeah, that horse. And make that, that spot. But you, you had a good, <laughs> you, you, you made a good statement when we talked about during their inspections what they do. They'll come in and grab a horse like that and they'll start parting hair and saying, well, right here, right here. But if you part the hair, if you got to part the hair, you're going to see some skin down That's there. That's right. Uh, it, it, it just, the public does not realize what the USDA is doing. They're not enforcing the Horse Protection Act. They're abusing it. You know, that picture that you showed earlier with the pair of chain and rollers on there, you know, to me, anybody can put some up there. He might have done that himself and took a video of that horse himself. You know, he don't know for sure. You know what I'm talking about? No. He don't have no proof. Well, that, that. was Clint's safe picture. I'd That's what I'm it, saying. I've seen it a long time ago. But, I mean, he put that picture up there. You know, he might have done that himself just to make more talk out there. Well, we I have seen some of Clint's, of course, he, he, we're talking about someone that's passed on, but uh, some of the things he did was just unreal. And, and the media showing that picture is just, to me, is they're trying to create a narrative that is not true. That's yes. not the horse. Well, I mean, we're allowed to have a six ounce action device. Uh, when we, we're talking about weights, I want to show y'all some different video on weights. And these are fact bell boots that they're saying go to. We're allowed a six ounce chain, right there is a 6.4 ounce yeah. bell boot. Uh, and, and they get different weights. There's a 15.3 pound or ounce bell boot. We use a six ounce chain. So I don't know whether they, if the, I, I just don't see where the USDA is really doing anything to help is what they were supposed to be doing. They're supposed to help the industry. There's 15.9. During the Saddlebred Show in Shelbyville, they allowed a horse, they, they brought a horse up that had a rub be, because of a bell boot. They didn't allow him to show, which is amazing to me. But what they do is, is Unreal. Now, here's something to think about. Now, those boots that you're seeing there, those were my boots. They weighed over two pounds a piece. And right there's a picture of them. You don't see the whole picture, but you got a pair of boots there versus the uh, a, a pad with a performance package. That doesn't show the true picture, but you're getting the zest of what I'm saying. But if you put all this up against a thousand pound horse, it's unreal. Yeah. And and people want to say that we're abusive. And then when they look to see what where the abuse comes from, a saddlebred owner said that the marks on their feet were training conditions. And the USDA evidently agreed with them because they only, I think they only turned down two horses. But if there's a mark on a walking horse feet, it's because we abused the yes, horse. That's right. So that really doesn't make a lot of difference. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I can't understand how they can say one horse it's okay, the other horse it's not okay. But all of these horses that that are gated are supposed to be covered under the Horse Protection Act. So why don't you, if you're going to do this to the walking horse, why don't you just say, hey, and I don't want to wish bad luck on nobody. What I think is the saddlebreds, the possifinos, the 
even the Clydesdale, all of them, ought to jump up and say, hey, we want to help y'all in this lawsuit because we agree with what you're saying. And then get out here and defend the horse industry, not the walking horse, not the saddlebreds, not the hackney ponies, but the horse industry. Yes. Defend our horse because eventually it's going to affect everybody. We've got these human rights people that they don't want us to have a horse. They don't want us to have a dog. They don't want us to have a cat. They don't want us to have nothing. They want everything their way. And there's a lot of bills up in Washington right now with different names that if people, wouldn't, if it wasn't like certain people out here, we would never know. I mean, we'd never know what was going on if certain people didn't read all the legislature and, and stop it. So, yeah. And that, that's just another thing. When you're going through inspection and our horse moves, and we got different videos here of, of horses that went through inspections. Now this, this right, that's a saddlebred. And she's inspecting it. I don't know if something's wrong with that horse or not. And you, I don't. And I'm right. not saying there is. But I am saying this. If that was a Tennessee walking horse, he wouldn't be showing. That horse did. Now here's a Tennessee walking horse that got, they would not let it show because she said it was sensitive. Sensitivity kept that horse from showing. See, that's the thing with me that you take a salad a Tennessee walking horse or whatever. I mean, the salad you seen that one video where the salad moved, mm -hmm. snatched his foot back. That's not saying that that horse is sore or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, a horse is a horse, regardless. I don't care, mm -hmm. salad bread, walking horse is still a horse. That's it. And so you, you go tell me this because this horse moves some and when I was videoing, I never saw him move. But, well, but, he did right there. Okay, but, but you did compare it to what he moved and to the other horses move. Yeah. Okay, that don't mean, you know, if they say in this, they let this horse show. Yeah, that horse showed. So if the other horse is still a horse. Yep. But the other horse was a walking horse, walking so horse. it was sensitive. That right there is a saddlebred, so it's okay. And that's what the USDA is saying, and that's what they're selling in Congress. Yes. And and, and, and to me, it's BS across right. the board. I mean, you can't, you can't, if you one horse move, if you're going to say, if a horse moves, he's sensitive. So that means for any horse, quarter horse, salad bread, whatever horse, if he moves, that's what they're saying. Right. So you can't say, just because a walking horse move, he's sore. No. Well, but they do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They and, do. But I mean, that's, that's what we are arguing against is that. No matter what it is, if they do not find something, it's kind of like your horse. Yeah. We know this for a fact. The horse had a, a field scar up at his knee. Granny wanted the horse written up, but she knew she couldn't write it up for that, so they went over and tried to make a DQP write the horse up. Said, no, we ain't, we're not doing it. You're not even supposed to be referring horses back to us anymore. So what does she say? And this this horse right here. Yeah. Wasn't anything wrong with him other than that fill scar right there. And she turned around and told the DQP, said, well, I'll write him up for inflammation then. Let's create something else. And Let's create another lie. To a veterinarian and they do all kind of x-rays and everything is fine on it. Everything you know? come out just fine. So now we're going to be talking right now about videoing inspections. Everybody's got to realize this. When you video inspections, have the custodian wear a recording device. Have it on his person. And then someone outside the ring video too. You want to make sure you get good wide angle video like this right here. Turn your phone sideways. And the, a lot of people know this, but you can take and zoom in and out with your fingers on a phone. Just like that. You take that horse right there and shake it right there. 
She's yeah. squeezing with one hand with a thumb and the front part of it. So you can't tell her accurate what, what's wrong with it. Well, she, she passed this horse, but I will say this. She was checking another horse or starting to, and she saw this horse coming in and told the camera lady, said, stop that horse right there, I want to inspect it. As long as she inspected this horse right here, she spent less time inspecting the horse she was currently inspecting than she spent on the left foot of this horse, just so she could get to this one, and then she didn't find anything wrong, which is amazing well, because they're terrible about inventing. But what I'm saying is this, you know, yeah, she passed that horse, but you just look how her hand is. I mean, you're supposed to have, when you're checking a horse, you're supposed to have one hand to where you're checking. Right. But now you got a hand up front and behind. And you're, you're doing, I, I don't, I really, to me, here's another one she was inspecting. And Jerry, I don't want to point a finger at any breed. I'm defending the walking horse breed. And I'm not saying that we're lily white. We all know we're not lily white. We all know we have problems, but I believe we do a fantastic job of dealing with that. Yes. We don't need the government to come in here and create something else. Now, this is another horse that passed. But, it, and it's, it, I don't, I guess it just upsets me that they want to single out and go after certain people and we know that they target people. I mean, it's pretty obvious that they target people. But like I say, now here's another. That's Thomas Derrickson led that horse up, and they passed him. But here's, here's a fact. If you inspect your horse, and you know that he does not have any blemishes, no marks, no nothing, you know he checks good and everything, then you're going to take him to the horse show. Who in their right mind would lead one up there with a blemish on their foot or that will not let them palpate? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, it'd be like you going back to Shovel today and seeing a state trooper out there sitting, just watching, and you see that 55 mile an hour sign say, out of hell with it, floorboard it, Floor, yes, get right. 80, 85, and think you ain't gonna get a ticket. That's what the USDA is wanting to convince the public that we do. And it's a lie. It is a lie from the get go. I'm not saying that everybody is squeaky clean again, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is a lot of what the USDA finds is created and the walking horse is no worse than any other breed out there. I would rather have ours than any other breed out there. And I'm not knocking other breeds. But if their horse can move during an inspection, why turn down a walking horse for doing the same thing? My biggest thing of it is you should go back to the original Horse Protection Act instead of changing rules as it goes, every time you go is, is a different type of rule. Well, they change rules all the time in, in Rhymer. They gave Rhymer's email address to call and ask questions. Well, I emailed him, asked him a question, and he ain't answered that question yet, and he ain't, because it was a yes or no question, and anybody that watches the congressional meetings and they've got someone in there to testify. I have never seen one of those witnesses that would answer a yes or no question because they're not going to admit to anything one way or the other. They're going to be right there on the fence. And by Reimer not answering tells me one thing. The answer was one or the other. Yes, we tell them to create violations or no, she's breaking the law. Those are the two answers. You can yes or no. You can yes, she's supposed to do it, or no, she's not supposed to do it. And we both know that two of those VMOs create problems. They don't find them, they create them. Like that 
scar right up under the knee. So, well, if you ain't going to write it for me, I'm going to write him up for inflammation. Where is it at? It doesn't make no difference. I can write it any way I want to. And that's the way they think. And Reimer can get mad. I don't care. Facts are facts. And all you got to do is go to an inspection and watch what they're doing. And you realize pretty quick that they're not doing it properly. They got a video on their site that shows how they inspect horses. But yet when they come to a horse show, they don't inspect that yes. way. But they want the public and the senators and representatives that back them up to believe they do. But until we show the senators and representatives and the public how they actually inspect a horse, it ain't... It, it, we're fighting a battle, and the only way we're going to fulfill our ob our future or see how we're doing is through the courts, because Congress, they're not going to take the time to look at any evidence, and the media, other than this station right here, is not going to show any facts. And it's, it's hard for us to get Channel 5, Channel 3, Channel 2, any of them. Fox News, all of them, something that's horrific or god-awful, they're all ready to report it. But if, when it comes to facts, I don't see none of them reporting the facts. Just like what she's doing right there, sticking her thumb down in that pocket. That ain't the way to palpate a horse. And and, and that's, that's what we fight, Jerry. Yeah. And that's what I want the public to understand we fight. So it, it's just, uh, I don't know, I, I've, I, I try to, uh, uh, I try to see both sides. And at one time, I, if you watch Dr. Ryan, uh, Dr. Dassault, yeah. he inspects a horse, bam, bam, bam. And he get done with it. That's, that's Rebecca the, Nanny. Yeah. She gets in there, bam, bam, bam. But when it comes to Granny, or Amy, or a couple others, it, you can tell they're, they're hunting, they're parting hairs, they're pulling hairs, they're doing everything. Let's find something. We've got to find something. We, it's our opinion that this horse is abused, and I've got to prove it. And it, it, that's what's so bad about it. That's what irks me and what's just it disgusts me that people are like that it really does and again i'm not saying that we're lily white because we're not but we ain't stupid enough to take a horse up that we know is is out of line or not compliant to inspection it just ain't going to happen it, and and that's that's the facts yeah it's, it's just, uh, that's why I'm, I always want my horse inspected before we go to a horse show. Because he is an equine veterinarian or she is an equine veterinarian that's making their living out here working with horses. They're not in Washington working for the USDA and going inspecting a horse show every now and then where they're sent there to find violations. These people deal with horses every day they know that's who inspects my horse if my horse was in need of something i would not call anybody that worked for the usda yeah. to help my horse i say i don't want you to touch him i want a licensed veterinarian in the state of tennessee that knows horses to help my horse and then we carry him to the show so and and that's just the way i mean that, that's just the way it is so i don't know how you feel I feel the same way, Jerry. I know how I feel. <laughs> okay, what what else have we got, CJ? Do we need to take a, a break? Go to the commercials? Let's go to commercials.
During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. I am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live foal guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Welcome back. I tell you what, Jerry, we need, do need to make some announcements, so here we go. West Tennessee Strawberry Festival is May 10th. The contact Vicki Benjamin, 731-694-5188. Start time is 6.30. Vicki Gilbert, your buddy's going to be the judge. Then we got the Upper Cumberland Walking Horse Show, May 11th. Uh, contact Jimmy Sherrill, 615-464-5047. Amanda Manis will be the judge, and showtime is 5 p.m. Smoky Mountain Classic, May 11th, also in Sevierville, Tennessee. Contact Monica Tipton, 865-661-2591. And the judge is Roger Vam. And there's one other show I want to talk about because it's going to be later this year or later this month. And that's the fun show. There's three classes or three days of shows, 72 classes. So I'm going to put a challenge out here that everybody brings every horse that they can think of I know we've got one we're going to take. You may have some mm -hmm. of the other customers may want to take them. I'd love to see every class have at least seven horses in it to prove a point that we bring horses to the shows that are compliant, that are ready to show. We, if we do this, it's more or less to get the public to pay attention that this is an industry that is vital to Tennessee. It's made up of people who make their living training horses, owners like myself who loves a horse. We're not hiding anything. But if we do that, then we would bring over 500 horses to the show. And I think that is a major thing because like that gentleman right there, before he goes to the show, he, he gets inspected by a equine vet in Tennessee that makes his living working on horses. So Mike Hilly, Jamie Bradshaw, and Dickie Shrivener are going to be the judges. You got three good judges there. You got a, an industry that supports their horse. So I just like to see everybody possible bring a horse yep e even if you have to bring one and enter it in the model class that ain't he ain't gonna stand still whatever do it anyway <laughs> bring, put, just put a horse in there uh, it, this is getting it's getting re bring bring a bring a baby up there and just walk it around I don't care but people need to know that this industry is it's vital for the economy of Tennessee vital for the economy of Bedford County and the surrounding counties. It's a 
we're going to be doing some interviews this week with business owners and how it's going to affect their business and it's, how it's going to affect the employees of those businesses. So it's, uh, it's not something that everybody wants to turn their back on. But I'd love to see out of those 500 and something inspections going in there, ever how many of the USDA decides to inspect, I'd love to see everybody video them. Video what they're doing. Take your phone, turn it sideways, zoom in and out. Watch what they're doing with their hands. Watch what they're doing with their fingers. It's, they turn that up and use their nails. Yeah. Bone to bone. There's, there's so many things that can be watched. And video ain't going to lie for them. That's one thing that you can bet. If you're videoing them, the video ain't going to lie. The video is going to show what they're doing. If they, if they pass a horse that they should have turned down, video's going to prove it. They passed that horse right there and they should have. Ain't nothing wrong with a horse. Candy's relaxed. She knows ain't nothing wrong with her horse. So that's the way everybody ought to be. Yeah. And there's you zoom in, in and out. So cell phones, cell phones make some great video, believe me. All right, I've said my piece. I, I won't say nothing else about it. What I will do though, I will say that I love to watch this. Round pinning with a saddle, and he's got a bridle on. But he's learning to guide. Well, I kind of do this when I first, before I even hook him to the cart and stuff like that, mm. to kind of teach him a little <clears throat> groundwork there, you know. And a long time ago, that's what a lot of people used to do, do a lot of groundwork to a horse and everything, you know, trying to get him used to, you know, turning and and learning what woe mean and everything else. Well, working with them, I, I like to watch the I, being groundwork, but and then when you put them in a, a cart, it kind of, I mean, they they uh, they get it done, and it and it works. That's the main thing. Well, you get them used to stuff, touch them on their back legs and everything, so they don't, you know, they don't get spooked from stuff. Well, you know, the other day we was, I was talking to a lady and, and she was talking about that when she bought a trail horse that she tried to find a ex-show horse. Uh -huh. She said she loved them because they were spook proof. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about to, <laughs> you go to a horse show, you're liable to have firecrackers and everything else going on. You exactly right. So them that. horses, they get used to kids screaming and yelling. They get used to all of it. And there he's learning to turn. Yes. i tell you something else I liked about the way you do these, Jerry, is you, you teach them how to be trimmed. That, to me, that's that's a big, big issue because I, I never see you use a twister or anything like that when you're trimming one. Well, I mean, you you teaching him something, you know. I mean, you got a lot of things that you can, you know, you can tranquilize them, you can put a twitch on them or whatever, but you're not teaching that horse nothing. Well, now, he, he, he wanted to run over me. And that's but, the first time he ever been hooked to a cart right I here. I know. <laughs> and everything, but I mean, but coming back from that ground work, you know, I kind of helped him when I pull on one side, he yep. kind of know exactly what I'm, what I'm looking for. Well, I tell you what, the more he went, the better he got. And, yeah. And he, 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 you, you can tell, it's just, uh, the way he's moving and everything, I think he's moving good. Oh, he's moving good. Everything going forward on him. At Carton, I, I know you do a lot of it. Uh, Dick Peoples does a tremendous amount of Carton. Yes. Jerry Beatty does a lot of Carton. Well, that's why I got a lot of my Carton from is watching Dick Peoples, you know, do it and stuff like that. And learned, I learned a lot from Dick, you know, over the years. Um. Well, now this horse right here, so everybody knows, he has not been shod. He, now his wolf teeth have been pulled, but now he has not been shod. He's doing that. Well, this is the biggest, this is another thing a lot of people outside that don't know nothing about the walking horses, is this is how we start all every horse yeah. without no shoes on. You know, a lot of people,
think, oh, you you know, they start, they just put them big shoes mm -hmm. on them. They call them stacks or whatever they want to call them. But this is the way you start them right here. You don't start them with no shoes on and you teach them how to guide and how to, and then you, you try to figure out what they want in life. Well, you'll find out their temperament too. Yeah. Of course, now he, he's a stud coat, he's a fall coat. And uh, right now we're carting him. No, nobody's ever been on his back. And it'll be a while before that happens. Uh, but now the carting part, very important, teaches them a lot. Yeah. And I, I enjoy watching it myself. I just, I really do. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I, I'll sit there half a day to see 15 minutes of carting. You need, oh, to, you need to improve on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to cart them now. I like to get them to going right. and tracking themselves. All right, well, let's go to Okoe and watch some victory passes. They had a good show up there. Right there is Golden Honor and Dan Waddell for George and Kim Lewis. That's a two-year-old Marion Gildan winner. Tell you what, Dan does a good job. Dan does a really good he job. He really does. He, he does an exceptional job, I think. Nice looking horse right there. Golden Honor. Dan does a super job on them horses. Well, I'll tell you what, he, when you go to a horse show, you can bet Dan Waddell's going to bring some. Yeah. Now, this was Aubrey's first time in the amateur class. Now, she's just fresh out of the youth division. Yes. This is her first time to show. I seen this weekend when she won again up in Kentucky. He's a lucky striking Aubrey Derrickson for Ralph Derrickson. That's one way to kick off your adult career, yeah. ain't it? With a win. He's a lucky strike. Aubrey Derrickson is in the saddle for Dr. Ralph Derrickson. This young lady sets a good seat. She does yeah, set a good does. seat. She sits up on the saddle real well. She presents that horse very well. You'll have fond memory there. Yep. Right here is Line Stone and Dan Waddell. Now, Kim told me that they was going to, uh, he actually won the, got to do the blue ribbon up there, but yeah. then they retied the class. But I thought the horse looked great. And uh, Kim told me that they was going to put this one out for consideration. Yeah. Open and amateur. So that's a good, that, you can tell that is one good horse right there. Kim said you can only keep so many and they've got a bunch of horses. But I like that right there now. Sound like that name, Limestone. Oh, yeah. And here's Jake Mr. Jacobs True Blue and Jake Jacobs. Jacobs. Tell you what, that amateur canter class just got tough. Oh yeah. When he decided to ride this one. Now, you're talking about a four-year-old world grand champion. And he, he is in the breeding barn some too. That's a nice horse. Uh -huh. I've not seen him make a bad show. I've seen him, you know, you see him when he's better. Yeah. But right here, he went right into the counter. He made a fantastic show. Oh yeah, he does a good job. Jake, Jake would do well with him. But it wouldn't surprise me if I seen a young lady on him eventually. Youth 11 under reserve winner, I sang Dixie and Allie Joe Jacobs. Calls her grandfather and says, "I need to be relocated to the <laughs> barn." <laughs> I like that. That relocated part yeah. of it. I tell you what, she just loves to ride. That's it in a nutshell. Loves to be at the barn. That's what you call a true horseman. Hey, tell me about it. Right here is Kim on Mayor Bill. 
Park Performance Amateur Reserve winner. That horse has won state classes all. You ask for it, and he, he has done it. Bayer Bill. Can't ask for anything better than that. No, wow. Uh -uh. Yeah, Cam's a good rider. Cam's a real good rider. I ain't seen George ride though, but I believe he goes trail da riding. Hoss. Right here's Da Hoss. You know what she told her. Da <laughs> she told him he, he was going to let her ride first. She was going to go sideways. She said, nope. She said, that ain't going to work. He said, what? She says, the pro drive goes the second way. <laughs> I said, God. And he said, he said he wasn't going to argue with it. He was just going to let her do it. <laughs> Allie Joe. Your amateur, amateur She's always got something to say oh, yeah. and she will amaze you. <laughs> nice horse. Well, nice horse. Hey, that is a the hoss. Honor and right here, honor and remember Dan Waddell. Hey what, he's gonna be a good one. Yeah. He he'll make a good breeding stud. Once he is the breeding, he'll do well. So he is outstanding. It's 1787, I still expect to see Kim on him eventually. Yeah. Kim Lewis, Alabama. Honor Dan just gets it done. That's all you can That's say right. is he, he gets it done. What do you call them people like him, trainaholics? <laughs> <laughs> own it off, own it off. Yep. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to work. Well, I guess you can do your, your bit now. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communication. More of What a Horse, coming up. I want to re-emphasize on going to the fun show. <laughs> that, I'd love to see the fun show make a huge, huge statement. Yes. All right, now we're going to go to the extravaganza. They had a good show. Some good horses over there. Right there was Cole Hahn and Allie Joe Jacobs. That's a good class, wasn't it? That was a good class. That was a real good class. Little bitty lady and a big old horse. Yep. That makes a statement. It really does. That sounds like a good country song right there. Yep. <laughs> Little bitty lady and a big old horse. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies' privilege. Thomas, I thought, made a heck of a show on this horse. That was a three-year-old Marin Gilding class, Missy and Tim Johnson. I liked him being over at the 
breeder, but I'm gonna tell you, he he's gonna. He's making a good. He's making a good trainer. trainer. Yeah, he is. He is. He's doing a real good job. And he he sets a good saddle. Yeah. Right here, Slim and Hot and Robert Dorch, amateur four-year-old stallion winner. I had a long conversation with Robert. We we talked about a little bit of everything yeah. in this industry. I know he, he really loves showing. Oh yeah. And he, he likes to go back and look at his videos too. He tells me he learns a lot from watching them. That's a real nice horse. Yeah, it is. He just keeps improving too. Yeah. Right here is Zorro Jr. and Beth Beasley. One heck of a show. But I never would have thought Beth was 50 and up. I really wouldn't. I didn't think she was that old. Not that you're old, Beth. A lot younger than me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you getting her done there? Oh, yeah. Real nice. Right here, I am big enough and Maxine Beasley for Beth Beasley, your youth pony. That pony just messed her automatic. Oh, yeah, he is. It's like a sewing machine now. He just going. Every time you see him, he's doing that same lick every yep. time you see him, every time you watch him. That makes him consistent. <laughs> yes. and that's, that's what happens. A lot of times, a consistent horse is, is what you want. <laughs> well, that's what everybody needs. Yeah. And I mean, he's so free and easy going. I like the fact that he, he's not really squatting, but he's reaching. Yeah. Good show, good show. Maxine does well. Yeah, she does. And here's Jose's Hello of You and Caress Hadman, your amateur four-year-old Baron Gildan winner. Caress is a good jockey too. Oh yeah, she is. Her mother loves cheering her on. She had to correct me on the way to pronounce her name, though. <laughs> Caress Heineman and Jose is hell of a view. I like that name. Hell of a. And right here's the Char Queen. That's a, that was a tough glass. Yeah. <laughs> Amateur four-year-old. Now she was reserved, but I love that. I love that flat walk she's got. Doesn't get that flat oh, walk yeah. and then comes up in that running walk. I mean, she is tough. The Char Queen and BB Beasley. Look at that. Mm -mm. And here's title defense and Samantha Green. She made an outstanding Yes, she show. did. That's a nice she horse. Did. So proud for Virginia. Oh, I was happy for Virginia, too. Virginia's been a great supporter of this industry. Yeah. And the horse is getting it done. Yeah. But now Samantha is a good, good jockey. Yeah. Real good jockey. Mm -hmm. Right here, Wilhelm and Dan Waddell. 
Tell me that ain't right. Missy Johnson really loves that horse. Dan got a great train. Oh, yeah, horse. he got a good He's got a barn horse. full of real good horses. Yep. That's a good name, man. Oh, yeah. Black Gin Scout. Right here, Black Gin Scout and Megan Hammond. It's a nice horse. Tell me about it. You get it done, buddy. Megan's another good rider. Mm hmm. Hmm. I tell you what, I, I, I get to watching these horses and, and <laughs> sometimes I just get hypnotized by them. Oh, yeah. And right here, Jimmer's Country Girl. Oof. That's a nice, nice horse. Hey, that's when I was talking to Robert Doris was when she was in the ring. Yeah. And we was both sitting there talking about her because uh, Carol, that horse looks the same when Carol's riding. Oh, yeah. Just an outstanding, well-trained horse. Top Gun Maverick and Bill Right Calloway here's Top Gun Maverick and Bill Calloway Top from Bob Adcock. Show pleasure, five and under winner. I tell you, Bob got a bunch of good horses too. <laughs> he got a. He does, man. He got a barn full of. Yeah. I think every one of his is is with Bill and, Bill, yeah. and mm -hmm. Alan now. That's right. Bob just super good person. Yeah, he but, is. Yeah, he really is. He's super good guy. Right here's Joe Pond, Shane Porterfield, Tanner Burks. I tell you what, I thought Shane and, and Tanner now did a good job. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Joe Paul. I don't believe Tanner gained any weight since he got married. Most guys get <laughs> gained weight. I don't think he's gained them out. My brothers in arms. Right here is my brother in arms and Thomas Derrickson. He was reserved in yeah. the 35 and under. He'll be in that class for a lot, for a yeah. long time to come. Missy and Tim Johnson. They should come up with a, some kind of challenge trophy in that young training class. They should. See, see yeah. who can. Because yeah. Thomas, I'm, how old is he? 22, 23? Maybe. Yeah, about, 20, about 23, 24 right. years old. Like right that. here was a great, great class, buddy. Honors to Mr. Guest. Yeah. And Wayne Wilson, Guido, for Evergreen Walking Horse Farm. Now, he put on a show. Yeah. Tell you what, that show pleasure class is getting tougher all oh, the time. Is. Something else, and here's Georgia, Florida line reserve in that class. That shows how tough that class was. Yeah. Tim Smith for Robert George.
Outstanding show. Yep, it really was. Carol does a good job putting on them shows. Yes, yeah, she does. Does and a good I tell job. you, I ate some of the best pork barbecue sandwich. Uh -huh. That's one of the best ones I've eaten in a long time. It was great. And I tell you, they had some pretty good sized hamburgers there too. Yeah, they did. They had some big hamburgers, but it wasn't a that barbecue sandwich. Something else. Jose's Show Off Reserve Amateur Three Year Old Married Gilding Winner with Caress Heineman for Tommy and Nancy Mills. The sheep, sheep's a good rider. Yeah, she is a good rider. A real good job. Tommy raised a bunch of good coats. Yep. He's a real nice guy too. I oh tell yeah. You, he's yeah, Tom. Well, he and his wife both. Yeah, they are. Right? He's nice people. He... His wife babysits her grandson a lot. <laughs> Right there is out of Jose and Drew Graves for Tommy and Nancy Mills. Two-year-old Marion Gilding winner. Yeah. Drew put on a show. That's a nice horse. Good job, Drew. A real good job. About all I can say is he did a good job. <laughs> so Drew's a lot of fun to talk yeah. to. He's, he's a cut up sometimes though. I want to remind everybody now, fun show is coming up. I'd, I'd love to see that. I, I, I remember growing up when you go to the fun show and it was packed to oh, yeah. help people everywhere. I'd love to see it. It tickled me if it was thousand horses during that show. I mean, it, it really would. If, all you got to do is think about it. If you average, average 10 a class, that'd be 720. Oh, yeah. So, and we got the horses. We just need to everybody remember that we're, we're promoting our industry. And to me, the more horses we bring to shows, the better promoting we're doing. And you, that's what right. it's all about. But we'll be doing interviews this week with businesses to see how the current uh, condition of the industry is and how it will affect people. But until then, I guess we're going to, uh, they keep changing the time on us here. <laughs> I, I think CJ's in there playing with a, with a keyboard. A keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Saying y'all got 15 seconds, now you got 40, now you got back, back to 15. <laughs> so what we're going to do is tell everybody goodbye. And we'll see how long we're here. See y'all next safe. week. <laughs>